Most of you still aren't subscribed. Uh, what are you waiting for? Also, I'm doing a giveaway. Stay tuned for the end of the video to find out how you can win 700 gems in Storybook Brawl. Enjoy. What is up, everybody? I'm no Lex Given, and today we are going to be looking at a fun Hatball Fork Wonder Waddle game. And basically, about a week ago, I remarked that I didn't have that many Wonder Waddle Hatball Fork games on the channel because I play them so much, so I just wanted to upload one of them, even though it was just like a pretty straightforward game. And then a few days later, I wind up having this game that blows that one out of the water and makes me wish I, I had just waited off a little bit longer because this game is super sweet. We're gonna be doing a bunch of really fun Wonder Waddle stuff and just just putting some powerful things together. Um, this shop is really interesting. I, I remember this part of the game because I want to buy this baby root and put a uh, shard of the Ice Queen on it. And when I do that, I find the Kitty Cut Purse. And it's just awkward. I had to do it in that order to give plus one, plus one to the Wizards Familiar. However, if I had cast the spell first, well, if I had cast the spell while I still had the other Cut Purse, maybe I wouldn't have sharded into the Cut Purse because I'm pretty sure that transformation spells do pay attention to what is in the available pool. So it might not have worked out anyways, but it could have won us this combat. Uh, we are still gonna walk out of this one with some additional gold, so not too shabby. Means we get to throw in a roll here and then probably just picking up two animals from this point, nothing too crazy and um, yeah, we'll go for this. Uh, I like picking up Polywoggles on Wonder Waddle, and um, the other animals can still potentially allow us to power spike in this early game here. Um, I also had a Wonder Waddle Hatball fork, or might not have been all three treasures, but at the very least Hatball in the recent December tournament. Uh, so. Wonder Waddle Hatball Fork has been a lot more represented on this channel recently. However, with this game, I wanted to show like almost the ideal Wonder Waddle Hatball Fork, and uh, it some things go right and some things go wrong in in some interesting ways. This isn't like your typical Wonder Waddle uh, game, and I guess that's what I'm trying to say mostly is that this game is a little bit weird still. This game doesn't play out just exactly typically, but I think that that is still um, really powerful and really fun. Definitely some options to take here. Probably just going to go for the healing potion plus the roll. Try to find some other three cost animals like this donkey. There is also the option here for a really interesting shop. What you can do is you can buy the brave princess, which turns both of the lonely princes into animals. Animals. Uh, and you can also cast the shrink spell because everything in this shop looks so good. And then you can have a 1010 frog prince. So all of that seems pretty strong in this next shop. Maybe I won't do anything with the level 2 treasure, but could potentially use the skip to pick up the donkey. Um, so next turn we're going to have 6 or 7 gold. It's going to be two gold for the spell, two gold for the princes, and then four gold to pick up the eight drops. So uh, if we slay twice with the kitty cut purse, seems like a stretch, but slaying twice with the kitty means that we would then theoretically be able to do it all. And no, we're going to come just short of the double kitty slay, but we are going to have the polywoggle flip, I believe, and that's going to become a hippocampus. So that is pretty sweet. Let's definitely shrink first and brave princess first. That way when we buy these frog princes, they will contribute to the hippocampus uh, increasing. Don't want to make that mistake again. And now if we skip, we can pick up the donkey. And I think that's the right play because I don't want to... 
wait around for a locked chest on Wonder Waddle when I'm already tier 3. Uh, locked chest Wonder Waddle can be fine if you pick it up when you're level 2, but at this point in the game it's just way too slow. Could sell two things to pick up Kitty Cut Purse. Honestly, like I said, I don't really care for these tier 2 treasures at this point, so I'm probably just skipping this treasure anyway, so it's really just plus one, plus one on our existing Kitty Cut Purse, plus an additional plus one gold every time I slay, but I don't think that is going to be enough to make me want to pick it up here. I do briefly lock the shop. I'm at least considering it, but I'm going to decide against it ultimately. And we do get our stag sniped, but Brave Princess is going to slay, so that is sweet. Uh, don't generally focus on Brave Princess when I'm doing Wonder Waddle things, but it is easy enough to complete here. And we are going to be able to deal some damage to Apox or Smile a lot. And that is nice as well. So just looking for donkeys, looking for stags, looking for pigs as well. Um, I can take the goat here. It's fine. It's not going to hurt us anything because we can just play this unit and then skip. Though actually Noble Steed is kind of interesting. It could help us slay with this Brave Princess. So I think I will take it. The thing is here, we're not really in a position where we need to force Hatball. And that is definitely something worth realizing because we don't have the upgraded Wizards Familiar and we don't have the hat or the ball. So I could definitely see picking up a summoning portal off this Brave Princess and trying to do some interesting stuff with this early Hippocampus that we got. All of those are pretty interesting directions. Um, potentially could put in this Bad Billy. It's a 4-6 over the Wizards Familiar. They're about the same. Honestly, with the fact that I'm not going to be playing this Bad Billy means that I probably should not have picked it up. Another really interesting play here is I just pick up these one-cost units because they don't cost us anything to purchase and hang on to for a turn, but I should potentially be selling them just to get a little bit more usage out of my Wonder Waddle. However, like I said, at this point in the game, I was considering that we might not be playing Hatball Fork. I was considering that we might be trying to transition or, you know, not really transition. We haven't picked a comp yet, but just look to play something with some tier four treasures. And for that reason, I wasn't super gung ho about picking up any of these tier three Wonder Waddle units. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to pick up the Lonely Prince because we can flip that if we buy a princess. Uh, do want to still focus on any blind mice that we can find, though. That was pretty good, or that will be pretty good. Uh, do like the Hippocampus, trying to potentially triple that. Like I said, I, I think that's the direction that we're going to wind up going. But if you're Hippocamping, then you need to pick up any golden chickens that you find. So going to have to sell that Lonely Princess, Lonely Prince that we just purchased and lose a gold because of that. Interesting shop here that we can mask ball and find two different uh, tier five units. So I like that. We find a Shoulder Fairies and a um, Nyan Sea Terror. Nyan Sea Terror, I can't be too excited about. Shoulder Fairies is good with the Hippocampus, but we don't have anything evil other than that Nyan Sea Terror. So that makes that a little bit awkward, but I am still gonna lock for the Donkey. I'm Certainly considering these other tier 5 options, the Shoulder Fairy is good if we spend all of our gold next turn to pick up both of these units. Then we've got like um, a 10-10 and a 20-20 that we're adding to the board. So that would at least make us a little bit stronger, but at the very least I'm pretty sure that I want to be able to pick up this donkey here. So that is going to be the plan. We are going to get this sleigh with the Brave Princess, so that is pretty sweet. We are also going to get a donkey trigger, so that buys us some time. But I do think we're going to be losing this combat pretty hard here, taking 6 damage down to 27. But now we get a treasure off of this. We get to grab a tier 4 treasure, and here's the summoning portal. And despite everything that I said, I'm kind of off it. I really just don't want to play the summoning portal and I was giving you real live commentary. I really thought that I wanted to take summoning portal here 
until I actually saw the summoning portal. Thing is, we're still Wonder Waddle. We can take a crystal ball here from this donkey. We've got a pig and we've got a stag that we can roll with. I like throwing a little bit more stats onto the wizard's familiar on the crystal ball turn. That seems good. And the rate of stone skin is just really good. Two coin for plus four plus six. That's just that's just a good rate. And that is going to give us a, a pretty large and in charge unit there in the form of this wizard's familiar. So despite everything that I said about wanting to potentially play some hippocampus line, I think that in our hearts, we all know. I mean, I told you at the beginning of the video, this was a hat ball fork video and an atypical one at that. And part of the reason is because we do get off to this start where maybe we do consider playing some different type of line. And with this um, brave princess and noble steed building, building some different interesting compositions here. But ultimately, we are going to fall back on our boy which is Wonder Waddle, and go into just some nice Wonder Waddling shenanigans here. So let's try to find some Tier 3 treasures and find some Hapal Forking stuff. That could be good. Um, another donkey is interesting. If we do that, I'll probably sell the donkey that we have, so that way we are more likely to find donkey. And then you know what? I am going to triple the Hippocampus. Um, it still makes sense to do that, and we find a Moonsong Horn out of it. So that seems great. We'll toss the Noble Steed. Don't really need that. And uh, sure, we can start to cast some spells now. So that's great. Uh, don't think I want to go for the copycat. Think that we can roll and find some better stuff. Poliwoggle is definitely a reasonable pickup, but I'm happy that I kept rolling. Find a Wizard's Familiar upgrade now, and now we're half off working. Now we're doing it. Could again pick up this Poliwoggle here, but I'm going to continue to roll and then pick up a Wizard's Familiar in this shop. We'll have to sell either the Golden Chicken or the Brave Princess don't want to hurt my board too much as it currently sits. So I think I am going to go ahead and sell the... Oh no, I am going to sell the Brave Princess. Wow. Okay. So we sell the... That's that's kind of surprising to me, but we sell the Brave Princess and then um, just put in the, uh, the thing. And I wind up selling the chicken too, just for the blessing of Athena. Get a little bit more stats on this turn. I thought I was eyeing that up at the last second. Um... Honestly, kind of strange plays there for me at the end of this combat, but it is not going to matter too much uh, in the long run. Different, uh, just some different choices that you can potentially make. Hard to say that one of those is right or wrong. Uh, the donkey spawning something does a lot of work to soak up some of this court wizard damage, uh, but ultimately these court wizards are strong and going to be a little bit of a nuisance, but not enough that we're not going to be able to win this combat. So that's what uh, I was saying. Doesn't really matter there that we lost the Brave Princess because ultimately it worked out in the end and we were able to win this one. So now we are going to be rolling for three Blind Mice and Pig and Stag and Wizards Familiar. We've got a lot of different hits that we can pick up. I am just going to pick that up to um, roll the, the Feed the Kraken and uh, buff the Wizards Familiar a little bit. I will go for the Merlin's Test. I think Merlin's Test is, again, just like such a great rate. Two gold for plus seven, plus seven at this point. And then we find the Forking Rod. So now we're Hatball Forking, and uh, we're really doing it. We're not quite Hatball Forking because we're using the Horn instead of the Hat. Um, but that's going to give us, like, almost good enough stats. So totally happy with that. I actually have nothing with which to cast the Beauty's Influence on here. Could do something like purchase Sporko or purchase the Minotaur uh, just to be able to have something to cast those on, but I don't think that that is going to be entirely worth it. Uh, friendly Spirit is insane, though, to pick up Friendly Spirit in that final moment, and then I'll just go for a Four Glory, and I suppose we will lock this shop. There's a lot of goodies in this one. The Spellweaver, the XP, and the uh, Donkey for the triple 
uh, all look pretty good. I would still replace the horn with a hat here. I think the plus one plus one is not worth the additional stats that you can get off of that. So definitely will be looking to do that as we hit Miri for a bunch of damage. And we're also going to get two free units off of this four glory, two tier five units for free. Going to get a Baba Yaga and a Baby Bear. Honestly, don't think that we're doing much with those. And actually, uh, come to think of it, yeah, I locked because of the um, three blind mouse as well, but there's nothing that this three blind mouse even does for us. So we are not going to be making use of that. And I also realize that we can cast the end on one of these newfound five drops that we just picked up. So that is pretty sweet. We'll cast that. And then I find an Aeon. So that is a really sweet one. Uh, could be polywoggling the Hippocampus at this point. That's definitely a consideration as well. Uh, but no need. We are just going to cast a bunch of spells. We're actually level six now. Totally forgot about that. We actually forked the XP spell. So we are now level six. We can also be rolling for Storm Kings. And that means that we're going to be able to find upgrades in our shop. Um, honestly, I think these spells are fine. Let's roll, see if we can find any Storm Kings. No, just some more Herculeses. Um, I don't think we need Hercules. It's, it's definitely up for consideration, but I think the main thing that we should be doing here is just finding a way to put Aeon in and finding a way to give ourselves the most powerful board that we can. Probably want the Hippocampus, but I'm going to roll with the prized pig and um, just take that extra gold to the bank here now too. So Aeon is going to mean that whenever that gets a slay, we are effectively hat balling on that next turn. So that's pretty good. And I do think we'll have the stats to take out Geppetto here, uh, but it's close. It's going to be close. They've got a huge uh, tree, but the fact that their vulture did not take out the wizard's familiar is absolutely huge. Going to mean that we get a kill onto Geppetto, who was level six. So they've done well to purchase some XP, uh, but they are going to fall short. And honestly, I'm not sure I'm replacing any of these treasures at this point. We could honestly even put in the bad moon at this point just to have the Aeon continue to slay. Um, but that is not really going to matter too much. I'm just going to cast this on the baby bear and uh, potentially we'll get another Aeon off of it. That could be sweet. But otherwise, for the most part, I don't really think we care too much about... Um, most things. We really don't care too much about most things right now. We're really just like, I think our units on the board are fine. We can get rid of these stags. I'm still looking for hat, uh, but don't really think that I need it. I think that I'm potentially also considering that treasure map could be a good pickup here now. Um, Aeon is one unit that I think I would like to play though. I guess we are short on mages. We should potentially be pursuing mages a little bit higher right now. Poison Apple I don't think is good enough. I do think that this spell is fine though. Um, sell two units. We'll sell our upgraded units so that way we can put some stats on Wizards Familiar and um, just gain a few more stats before we go into the combat. Double Shrivel. We've all of a sudden turned this backline Spellweaver into a 36 attack Spellweaver. So definitely a few more stats can go a long way for this one. We Shrivel and deal with some of my opponent's stuff, but they Poison Apple and Earthquake us. So that is huge. That is going to eliminate a ton of our stats. They take out both of our Wizards Familiars. I don't think this is going to matter. We still have a huge Spellweaver, but they're able to take a little bit less damage. Doesn't really matter, though. We're still going to kill them. None of that mattered. That combat was, was easy peasy. We were 94% uh, to win, and we were going to deal 10 damage to them on average. So they were dead. Do have to consider what else we want to do here, and I think I've had enough of this Hippocampus, so I am going to roll out of that, and now I'm going to make an additional copy of Spellweaver. No, I'm not. I think that's too expensive. Yeah, I think I decide against that. All right, great. I do decide against that, and um, just roll for some additional stats here. Throw some more stuff onto the Spellweaver. Uh, Merlin's test is really good. There's always like a balance because you want to throw additional stats on Aeon. Um, oh, do I? I guess I didn't realize that my Siren was a monster and thus didn't cast that spell. Um, that's a little bit awkward. I again consider the Evil Twin. Don't think that that is going to be good enough. 
Um, also, um, yeah, just, just running out of time. It's tough to, uh, to make everything happen that you want to make happen in these shops. Here we'll pick up another mage and then we'll sell, um, need to sell one more thing for another Aeon. So now we are done with, um, uh, there I realize it's a monster. Sorry, there's just, there's just way too much going on right there in the final second to try to, um, make sense of it all. But we pick up another Aeon. That is going to let our board scale even further. We're still playing this really weird um, sheep in wolf's clothing. Um, but short of that, I think that we are really powerful. We are going to lose this combat, though. We're actually going to lose it pretty big with the fact that my opponent kills us off a pumpkin shot. We take 13, but luckily we were at 41. So it doesn't really matter. I do want to find some ways to actually start to make ourselves a little bit more powerful, though, now going forward. And there's basically two ways to do that. Well, three. Um, we can dream, we can find some Storm Kings. Another thing, now that we've got two Aeons, we can actually replace this horn that we have, um, especially if we are able to um, triple this Aeon. Because if we triple the Aeon, then that's going to make most of our spells free or cheap regardless. But the other way that we can get a little bit stronger is by dreaming. And Celestial Tiger seems fine here. It's double ball. Um, Peter Pants doesn't really do anything. And then I realize we're going to be changing our hero again. So I just click on Peter Pants and then go into Sad Drac. And Sad Drac is a way that I definitely really love to pop off as Wonder Waddle. So... Um, yeah, now the next big ways that we power spike are by tripling this Aeon and by um, potentially finding a treasure to replace this horn with. But an, up an upgraded dragon, and mostly the fact that it's upgraded doesn't matter. The fact that it has 41 attack does matter. It's 41 attack dragon with sad drac is going to get in and it's only going to slay once. <clears throat> excuse me, only going to slay once in this combat, but that should be enough to at least win the combat and help me continue to grow. Uh, so that is pretty wonderful. Looks like we're going to get through this combat. I'm just wondering if we're going to be killing this uh, dragon or not. We're not going to be killing them from 19. It was a little bit of a stretch. But from here, yeah, now we're just rolling for Aeon and trying to cast as many spells as we can each turn. So... Um, still doing half ball fork stuff and, um, awkwardly if after a drink me finding no castable spells there as I don't want to flip any of my good units and I didn't have any trees. So seeing that I'm going to pick up a good tree, going to cast as many spells as possible on the dragon because the dragon is the only one not growing every time we cast a spell. Everything else is just getting free stats whenever we cast a spell. Hanging on to our Siren and our Baby Root here just as units to be able to cast spells on. And uh, still mostly right now rolling for the, um, for the Aeon. But I do strongly consider picking up this Sporko here. The reason is if I triple this Spellweaver... Or if I triple this, um, I guess it's just if I triple the um, the Spellweaver, which we see right there. I've got a really interesting conundrum at that point, because tripling Spellweaver makes my board significantly worse. And for that reason, I'm going to, maybe I should have played that good boy. It looks like it might have actually been huge. Um, the... Um, yeah, we just destroy my opponent here with the dragon, so it really doesn't matter. Um, they they can't have a spell that's going to save them from that. But um, the if we triple the spell weaver, we play down a unit, and that is something that I just talked about in my video that I believe I uploaded yesterday with Peter Pants hitting Mythic, 
is that I wind up tripling a Spellweaver towards the end of the game, and it really hurts me because then I am playing a unit down. So in this case, I'm not going to do that. I am just going to triple the Aeon. Ninth Book of Merlin is a huge power spike here and definitely what I was looking for. So we can get rid of the Moonsong Horn. Our spells are still cheap enough that this shouldn't matter. And now if they clear any of our units, we are going to hit them with a spell. So this is a huge, huge power spike here. And from here, we're basically like full build as far as uh, a Merlin is, uh, or uh, not a Merlin, a uh, Wonder Waddle is concerned. Uh, transforming into Sad Drac gives you an additional treasure. Having that upgraded Aeon that you're snowballing with gives you an additional treasure. And then being able, because it frees up the hat slot, which then allows you to replace it with the book. And the only place that we really get better from here is if we were able to put in another like mimic or something like that at the very, very end. But this is still going to be totally fine. We get a three for zero off the dragon. Their dragon gets a one for one, and then we get a spell off of it too. Um, Aeon trades one for one, but it's all going to be a matter of this pumpkin there. Uh, Rotten Applewood only trading one for one against the dragon. So the dragon got a four for one and it's going to rely onto this. They do have frontline Medusa, backline apple tree, which is the opposite of how you want it. You want backline Medusa, frontline apple tree, but it's not going to matter too much. They just aren't going to have the stats, and we're going to be able to take the big bad wolf down. Sir Smile a lot is uh, smiling after that one, and we even have the BM for glories there at the end, but there you go. That was a pretty decisive Wonder Waddle win, and um, yeah, that is that is like some of the craziest stuff that you can do with Wonder Waddle. Obviously, as we're sad drag here by the end, uh, but I thought that this was a just a really good game to showcase some of the crazy things that you can do, and honestly. <clears throat> It's a little bit awkward even that our Wizards Familiar is unupgraded because we were Wonder Waddle uh, all the way till the very end of the game. Uh, so a lot of fun stuff. Very powerful game there. And that's going to be it for me for this video and for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lux Given. Peace. I'm going to be giving away a 700 gem bundle at the end of this month, and here's how you can enter for your chance to win. First things first, subscribe to this channel. That won't enter you into the raffle, but you will have to be subscribed to win. In order to enter into the raffle, all you have to do is comment on a Storybook Brawl video including this one. Every time you comment on a Storybook Brawl video on my channel this month, you'll get a raffle ticket for my January giveaway. If you comment on a video within the first 72 hours of me posting it, then you get two raffle tickets. And if you comment on a video within the first 24 hours of me posting it, I'll give you three raffle tickets. Might also offer more ways to enter in the future. Uh, I don't want to break the economy of this. I want the main way to enter to be commenting. So leave a comment right now. Let me know what you think of the giveaway and of the video. And thanks for watching.